All right, we started the show today talking about the energy crunch here in British Columbia. Last year, we had to import 20% of our power. That is the highest import ever in BC history. And by the way, that's the only reason we got through that cold snap that we had last weekend was because hydro had imported enough power and saved it up that we're able to get through. So that is why we were able to keep the, the heat going. Now, you take a look next door in Alberta where they had the power grid alerts last weekend. Take a look what's going on south of the border in Washington State. Uh, they've had some power shortages too. This is at the same time we've got a government wants to ramp up and electrify our economy. We're encouraging people to buy electric vehicles. We're encouraging people to heat their homes with electric heat pumps. Where's all this power going to come from? Now, Hydro has got a plan to expand wind power, wind power in British Columbia, which is fine. But will that be enough? A lot of experts dubious about that. Now, here's the question. What about nuclear? What about nuclear power? Other provinces are doing it. Ontario gets most of their power from nuclear. New Brunswick has nuclear power. Next door in Alberta... They're taking a look at nuclear power now. Got Dr. Chris Kiefer standing by to discuss. Have a listen to Justin Trudeau here first. This is on a recent recent visit to British Columbia to talk about energy production here. Listen to what he says about nuclear at the end here. Have a listen. We need to reduce our emissions and we need to reduce our de- uh, dependence on oil and gas. We're going to need more electricity and I know there are a lot of brilliant uh, uh, innovators here in BC and across the country leaning in on that. And nuclear is on the table, absolutely. Nuclear is on the table. Hmm, okay, let's discuss with Dr. Chris Kiefer now, President, Canadians for Nuclear Energy. Very pleased to welcome him. Chris, thank you for coming on today. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You bet. I appreciate it a lot. So when we take a look at the energy grid across the whole country, it's on Ontario is, is the most nuclear dependent right now, right? Yeah, we're the nuclear heartland. Um, we built uh, 20 reactors in 22 years, um, large candy reactors, which essentially have made us an ultra low carbon jurisdiction. We're not blessed in the way that Quebec and BC are with endless hydroelectricity, although from your introduction, we're hearing that it's not endless. Um, mm. But we have achieved similar to BC, an ultra low carbon grid. Um, we had Niagara Falls, but we ran out of hydro. We used to do a lot of coal. We were able to phase out coal completely. It was 25% of our grid using nuclear. So it's been an incredible air quality and environmental and emission success story here. Um, There was a reactor in Quebec, which has been decommissioned, although they're looking at restarting it, given they're having similar issues as BC. They're they're running into the edge of their hydro capacity, and also New Brunswick has a a nuclear reactor. So there's a proud Canadian history developing its own uh, nuclear reactor, which runs on natural uranium. Um, It's an incredible accomplishment. Um, certainly I'm biased here, but I think it's something that BC should, should look at. Yeah. And when you take a look next door in Alberta here, and I was reading the headlines this week about Alberta taking a look at these small modular reactors, right? Can you tell me about that? What's going on there? Well, I mean, first off, let's talk about Alberta for a second. Sure. Um, They narrowly made it through this cold snap. They made a really big investment in wind and solar. I mean, almost 6,000 megawatts. To to give you perspective, 12,000 megawatts is where they set a new peak demand during this cold snap. And unfortunately, wind and solar are what I call fair weather friends. Um, Those resources were essentially entirely absent uh, during that period. So yeah, Alberta is now looking at its alternatives. Obviously, it's got you know, a lot of gas and that's, uh, you know, the dominant resource on the system. They've almost phased out their coal using gas. Um, but, you know, given the failure to show up, the fair weather friend nature of wind and solar, there's a reevaluation in Alberta. And yes, they're looking at nuclear. Um, they're looking at reactors that are about half the size uh, to uh, a third the size of the large can that we have in Ontario. It's a better size for their grid. Um, although maybe BC and Alberta could get together and build some bigger reactors and share the juice. Okay, well, it's interesting about the, these small modular reactors, these SMRs. We keep hearing all about these things and whether that is the path forward in the future here. But, Chris, let me play a clip here for you get your thoughts because there are opponents to this idea who say, no, 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 this is just some sort of myth or spin coming from the nuclear industry. This is not going to work. It would be expensive as hell. 
You know, so have a listen here. This is M.V. Romana, who is a professor at UBC, He's a professor in nuclear policy. He's not buying this SMR uh, argument. Let's listen. Because you are trying to control a very hazardous process, it's necessarily a very expensive process. And the only way that the nuclear industry has figured out how to reduce costs is to build big so that you can reduce the per unit costs. And so when you go to smaller reactors, you lose out on those economies of scale. Yeah, okay, so he says these smaller reactors would not be as economical. What do you say to that? I would have to say Professor Ramana, I think, is one of uh, the most intelligent anti-nuclear activists in the country. That is an untested premise. It's true that nuclear has scaled larger and larger. Our can started off at 200 megawatts, a little smaller than what's being looked at in Alberta, and have scaled upwards uh, from 500 up to about uh, 900 megawatts. Um, so I will hand it to MV Ramana. Um, this is an untested question. Um, but let's let's talk about this for a second. I mean, when you talk about building a hydro dam, this yeah. is an asset that's very expensive up front. Nuclear and hydro have a lot in common, but they provide value for 100 plus years. And nuclear is up there as well. I mean, we've renewed our, our fleet here in Ontario. Many of the reactors are going to be going 70 years. Um, there's no reason why we can't renew them again to go 100 years with a nuclear reactor. So if you're looking at just a short return on investment, um, nuclear and hydro don't look amazing. If you're thinking in a long-term way like we should be for our children or their children's generation and, and for a climate action that's durable um, and power that's reliable and doesn't, you know, not a fair weather friend that doesn't go away when the weather gets extreme, you know, climate change may bring some more extreme weather, um, then nuclear looks very attractive. Um, so, cool. you know, I tend to favor our made in Canada, homegrown nuclear technology. We do have a, you know, five, 600 megawatt size reactor. I think Alberta should build those personally. Um, but you know, SMRs, uh, you know, maybe a good match in smaller grids, particularly grids like Saskatchewan. Okay. What about safety? And when you take a look at the list of nuclear accidents that have happened around the world and you read these names that are basically seared into the public conscience over time, right? Like Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, Fukushima. What do you say to that? Like a lot of people are concerned about the safety record of this industry. What's the, what is your answer to that? So, yeah, I mean, the, the reactor technology itself has improved over the years. The operations have improved over the years. I mean, Chernobyl, it was run by, you know, an incompetent Soviet country with, with a terrible safety culture and a terrible reactor that didn't have containment. You know, the opposite there is, you know, Three Mile Island, um, where they had a partial meltdown. There's containment. And the highest dose that the surrounding population was exposed to was about a chest X-ray worth of radiation. I'm a medical doctor. I work in the emergency department. I do X-rays all the time. I do CT scans, which are much higher doses of radiation. Nobody um, suffered any radiation-induced injury um, at uh, Three Mile Island and actually at Fukushima as well. There were no deaths related to radiation from what's really a worst-case scenario. I mean, three simultaneous meltdowns of large reactors. Um, the doses just weren't high enough with the current technology that we have. Now, a Fukushima event is not possible in something like a Kandu reactor because Canadians have truly designed the safest reactor technology in the world. Um, so, you know, the accidents are something that we need to be thinking about, um, but we've learned a lot about. And, you know, in the history of civ civilian nuclear power, particularly outside of the Soviet Union, you know, there's essentially been zero deaths from radiation. You compare that to another risky industry like aviation, right, where, you know, despite an incredible safety culture and, and it's reminiscent of nuclear in terms of the professionalism and regulation that goes into the two industries, we still lose a few hundred people every year in airline crashes. Uh, nuclear, nuclear does very, very well there. You know, there have been the, hmm. the biggest disaster in terms of power generation was a was a hydro dam collapse in China, which killed over 100,000 people nearly instantly. Does that mean we shouldn't do hydroelectricity anymore? No, we build dams yeah. way better here in Canada. We know how to manage the risk. We have evacuation zones. You know, I've, I've been in BC and, uh, you know, been on the beautiful west coast of Vancouver Island and seen, you know, the warning areas. You might have to evacuate yeah. quickly. Um, we, we manage risk. So, you know, in my mind, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to minimize or dismiss the accidents, but they have been really overblown. And that, that's because of our fear of, of nuclear energy arising out of, you know, the, the weapons aspect of the technology. Right. Chris Kiefer is my guest. Canadians for nuclear energy. Full phone board here. Let's go to Steve in the West End. Hi, Steve. Go ahead.